here inside Tucker Stadium, some Ohio Valley Conference football. Austin P, Tennessee Tech in Cookville, Tennessee. Welcome inside the broadcast booth alongside Sam Brooks. I'm Dylan Bazzano. Sam, you couldn't have asked for a better day weather-wise, but best thing of all, we got football in February. Football basically year-round, and uh, really excited for the opportunity for these young men to get out there and, you know, see the fruits of their labor and the work that they've done in the offseason. Well, Austin P, they are the defending OVC champions. 2019, they won 11 games, they won two playoff games, they went 7-1 in league action. A big reason why, let's take a look at today's player spotlight. Austin P. they sport the OVC preseason offensive player of the year. That's D'Angelo Wilson. There's the OVC defensive player of the year, Cordell Jackson. Sam, these two can certainly be a handful today. A couple of exciting athletes to watch. I'm sure you're going to see the ball in their hands a lot today. And uh, on the defensive side, so putting some pressure on Tennessee Tech. And for Tennessee Tech to be successful, they really need to control the ball as much as possible. Well, Jackson is ready, Wilson is ready, Tennessee Tech and Austin P. they're both ready. We've got the opening kickoff from Tucker Stadium when we return on ESPN+. Stadium, the Golden Eagles will kick things off to kick off the season. OVC football in the spring for the first time. Sam, this is the only game in town you had four OVC games scheduled with all the weather in all across these OVC cities. This is the only conference game today. Yeah, and to be at all dealing on a Sunday, it's kind of got the NFL uh, flair along with it. But looking forward to this game. I'm really excited for these young men to be able to get the opportunity to get out on the field and, you know, really uh, get some payback for all the work that they put in the last year and a half. Well, Tennessee Tech will kick things off. They'll turn to the freshman Hayden Olsen, who will be Tech's place kicker this year after Haydar Zaydan, the great Golden Eagle kicker, graduating. Austin P prepares. Jay Parker is back there. Also for the Govs is Nathan Page, Little Rock, Arkansas product. 455 days in between football games at Tucker Stadium. And so why not have a little bit more of a delay as the ball falls off the tee? We've waited this long. What's a couple more seconds? It's a tad bit windy out there. You can see the flag waving uh, with the wind blowing in. From the north, it looks like, Dylan. Sunny day in the Upper Cumberland. Temperature 55 degrees. We've got winds, as Sam noted, about 12 to 15 miles an hour from the south. So Olsen will be kicking with the wind at his back. Drives it over to Nathan Page as he feels it right at the one-yard line. Page finds a crease. It closes quickly. And Austin P will take over. At their own 20. Nice kick coverage right there by Tennessee Tech. Everybody staying in their lanes. Pretty decent return from the goal line out. About a 20-yard pickup for the kick returner. So as the Gov offense takes the field, the Tennessee Tech defense out there. Let's take a look now at the keys to the game. It's presented by Delta Dental. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental. Sam for Austin P. Handling Tennessee Tech's experience on the D-line. Golden Eagles, they've got Henry Caramu. Chris Tucker and company, they could potentially be a lot to handle for a young offensive line for the Govs. And don't forget a new coach for Austin P. also. First play of the game is a pass to C.J. Evans. That one is completed for a pickup of about five yards. Just a little quick screen out there. We're seeing that a lot today in present-day football, getting a, you know, the ball in mismatches to the athletes out wide. So Cam Hudson who made the stop there for the Golden Eagles. That'll bring up a second down and five. It'll be the first carry of the game, quarterback keeper. Golden Eagle defense is up to the task for a limited pickup there on second down. Nice stop there by Tennessee Tech up the middle, and they were pretty strong last year in their front uh, up the middle for Tennessee Tech. Got a couple of new kids in there. We'll see what they can do this year as the season progresses. That is Draylon Ellis, the true freshman quarterback, out of Olive Branch, Mississippi. Third down, the Govs will get it with a huge play right up the middle. And a first down, that is their senior tailback, Ahmad Tanner, who explodes right up the gut. And you mentioned a freshman quarterback in the game. He, he must be very good to get the nod as a freshman quarterback. Three-star dual-threat quarterback by 247 Sports. Tries to 
Throw it along the near side to Wilson. Sails over his head and incomplete. There's D'Angelo's first look right there and a little miscommunication right there. Looked like he wanted it to be a, a curl as far as D'Angelo and the quarterback through the fade. You're going to see a little bit of that with a freshman quarterback in a new situation. Cam Hudson in his sophomore season. He was asked to guard a lot of the number one threats across the league as a freshman. Very quick Golden Eagle secondary. Second and 10, Ellis rolling, trying to buy some time, but the Tennessee Tech pressure forces the incompletion. Nice pressure. Had a little bit of time, good coverage by the secondary. Anytime you got a quarterback sticking in the pocket that long and not being able to get rid of the ball, it's pretty good coverage downfield. Let's look at the starting lineups presented by Legends Bank. Legendary service, extraordinary people. Legends Bank. Of course, we do see the quarterback, Draylon Ellis, was listed as the backup on the two deep, but he is getting the nod. Of course, we spotlighted D'Angelo Wilson offensively, the preseason OVC Offensive Player of the Year. Quarterback keep on third and long, Golden Eagles. Get the stop and force a fourth down. Nice uh, tackle right there. I think you're going to see a lot of that out of Draylon Ellis today for Austin P. I think that's probably the main reason he is at the quarterback position. That dual threat, as you mentioned, Dylan. Seth Carlisle, six-foot junior linebacker, won an OVC Defensive Player of the Week nod back in 2019. He forces the stop. Matt Rigney out there, the Middle Tennessee transfer, the sophomore punter. And the Golden Eagle freshman, Jiron Gilmore, is back to receive. Tech defense forces the stop, but that'll be a delay of game. Not a big loss there. They'll move them back five and punt it again. Tech making some changes with that opportunity. So after the Govs did convert on the first third down, a big run by Maud Tanner. Tennessee Tech able to force the uh -oh. high snap. Rigney going to pick it up, and the Golden Eagles will have big-time field position on the errant snap there by Austin P. Those are the type things that you'll see this time of year. But Austin P. having played two games in the fall, you would think they would be a little bit more polished coming into this game. Just a little high snap, couldn't get his hands on it, went over his head. Nice change of events for Tennessee Tech. Take a look at the high snap again. Rigney trying to climb the ladder, slips off his fingertips. And so Tennessee Tech, Bailey Fisher and company will have the ball at the Austin P 18-yard line. Sam, you probably couldn't have scripted a better beginning for the Golden Eagles. You, you really couldn't. A good defensive stop. You know, these teams don't know each other very well. Long break, as you said, 400 and some odd days uh, before you've actually played. But a lot of time to look at film if, if you have some of the same players coming back. Preseason All-OVC quarterback Bailey Fisher. On a low snap, hands to Day-Day Giss, but limited pickup there on first down. Austin P closed it down there in the middle. Dady saw daylight outside, tried to get to it, but Austin P stayed in their lanes. Good defensive play. Only one yard pickup for Tennessee Tech on play number one. Fisher, the second team all OVC quarterback a season ago, set a series of Tennessee Tech single season records at the quarterback position, including over 2,600 passing yards, 21 passing touchdowns. And of course, a dual threat quarterback combined for 32 total touchdowns. Second and nine, Fisher looking for his first pass of the ball game. It is tipped and goes incomplete. Intended there for Justin Oden. Justin Oden had good position right there. Pretty good pressure from Bailey Fisher's left side, Austin P's right side of the defensive line. He looked to run real quickly, saw Oden sitting there and tried to get the ball to him, overthrew it just a little. Got to be careful here. Dylan, they're in good field goal position right here, so make sure you choose a good play, maybe to get the first down, but definitely have that chance at a field goal if not. Third and nine. 
Fisher, the third year starting quarterback for the Purple and Gold. Gist in the backfield. Fisher takes the snap. He looks end zone and it goes incomplete. Along the far side, Quinton Cross, the redshirt sophomore. Redshirt sophomore right there. Little, uh, He was in the inside slot position, ran a corner route. Uh, pretty good throw it looked like. You know, got something today, sun in the background. I don't know if that was a factor right there, but the ball looked to be on the mark. And you'll see the replay right here is that little crossing route right there, and you got a corner on top of it. Definitely a uh, potential to catch that ball right there. Jonathan Edwards on the coverage. So here's the Tennessee Tech freshman kicker, Hayden Olson. On for the field goal. His first try as a Golden Eagle, and Hayden Olson goes no good. Looked like he missed it a little wide left. So Tennessee Tech getting a, a good break right there. Only was able to move the ball one yard. Austin P. Tough on defense and forced to field goal and missed by the freshman for Tennessee Tech. So credit the Govs defense. They stand tall. Miss field goal by Hayden Olson. Austin P. offense comes right back onto the field. The defending league champion from 2019. Lost a lot of talent on the offensive side of the ball. Of course, they have D'Angelo Wilson back in the receiver position, but are working with a new quarterback. Substitution violation. Too many men on the field. That is our referee, Drew Myers, for today's contest. The all-OVC first-team quarterback, Javon Craig, who is now an assistant coach here at Austin P. Jeremiah Oatesfall, former OVC freshman of the year, played during the fall while he transferred to Memphis. There's a carry along the near side as Ahmad Tanner, second time that they've called his name. Good look at the Austin P. backfield right there with Ellis at quarterback, Tanner at tailback. Second down for the Govs, this time Ellis throwing. Reception made and a first down for Austin P. Nice read by the freshman quarterback right there, taking what Tennessee Tech gave him. We do have a flag on the field. Evans hauled it in. They're moving backwards. Looks like it might be against Austin P. Eugene Mentor out wide for Austin P, holding one of the defensive backs, which probably sprang him for the pickup. Referees caught that, called the hold, moved Austin P back. Second down, probably about 13, Dylan. Evans, who's played some running back, but listed as a receiver. In fact, had a monster game against Central Arkansas this past fall. Very first play from scrimmage. Took it 75 yards for a touchdown. First play of the fall season. There's Tanner again. Working hard to get it across the 25-yard line as a slew of Golden Eagles. There to help force third down. Good tough run up the middle right there. Picking a lot of that yardage back. Looks like they probably got about nine yards on that pickup. And make it third down in about four yards. Third and four, Ospie, one out of two on third down conversions. Again, they go Tanner. He dives across the 30. He's going to pick up the first down. You look at the spot. Yeah, they've already moved it, haven't they? Looked like it was right on that line, but it is a first down. Seth Carlisle to stop. There's a Golden Eagle down. Here early stages first quarter. That's Josh Relliford. And we will have our first break in the action. Golden Eagles miss a field goal. Austin P now on offense. All scoreless first quarter from Tucker Stadium. Bailey Fisher waiting to get back out onto the field. Austin P. driving with a first and 10 
at the Govs 30. Freshman quarterback Draylon Ellis. He's looking to take a shot deep. He's got Wilson. Reception is made. Big time play by the Govs all the way down to the Tech 21. Just to go by Wilson on the outside, fake up the middle by the quarterback you'll see right here. Hold the linebackers, and it's just a go. Ran right by both defenders, and good throw and catch. Gain of 49. Tanner, though, stopped in the backfield. That's the big sophomore, Kale Dava. Tanner on the carry. Tackle by number 92, Kale Dava. Nice push by the defensive line of Tennessee Tech, making the stop right at the line. Big plays, Dylan. Big plays for Tennessee Tech. They're going to have to stop those big plays if they're going to be in the game today. So a second and long. Again, Tanner cuts it up the middle. And a nice gain by the senior running back. Here the first down marker. But is just short. Austin P spreading them out wide with four wides, one back in the backfield. Spreading Tennessee Tech's defense out, giving it to the tailback up the middle. Nice blocking by Austin P's line. Third and short for Austin P. Already two out of three on third down conversions. For the Govs, Ellis, he'll call his own number. Doesn't look like he got it, though. Tennessee Tex, number 99. We've heard that name over the past a lot. Jalen Gladney. Quick move inside. Quarterback draw from the get-go. Gladney read it, pushed his blocker back, and made a good tackle for Tennessee Tech. Fourth down and a long one. Scotty Wald in the first year, Austin P. head coach, the youngest coach in Division I football. They hand it off to Tanner. This one's going to be close. Spins on the spot. Seth Carlisle there for the stop. As we await on the spot. Doesn't look like he got it. Well, they'll say the Golden Eagles do come away with the stop. Huge defensive stop there for Tennessee Tech. Kind of what Austin P did down on Tennessee Tech's side. Nice Carlisle, local product from Macon County, making the tackle from his safety position. Actually linebacker more than <laughs> – they move him around a little bit, but he's mainly a linebacker, no doubt. Carlisle can't put on some weight this offseason in the weight room, looking really good, bulked up for Tennessee Tech, playing that linebacker spot. Bailey Fisher back on the field. Good look at Bailey right there. Record-setting quarterback for Tennessee Tech. Well, a missed Golden Eagle field goal on Tech's first drive. After the 49-yard reception to Wilson, the Tech defense stands tall. So this game remains scoreless about midway through the opening quarter. Fisher, the dual-threat quarterback, on the keeper. Got a penalty on the play. That's Jack McDonald, who was able to get the stop for Austin P. but we'll see the penalty. Looked like it came after the fact. So we wait for the call. Drew Myers again, today's referee. Taquay's legs with a personal foul. So Tennessee Tech, give the Golden Eagles 15 yards, give TTU a first down. Taquay's a 6'3", 329-pound freshman for Austin P in the middle. Got some good push up the middle right over the ball and uh, had Bailey Fisher. I'm not sure, couldn't see what happened in the scrum, if you will, right there for Austin P. but the referees thought it was a little bit too much, giving Tennessee Tech a 15-yard penalty. Tennessee Tech going to bring Willie Miller, the sophomore. He hands off Giss, but a big loss on the play. Austin P. defense ready to make the play. Really good push right there by Prater and Cordell Jackson for Austin P. on that far side. Nothing going, just a little sweep for Tennessee Tech. Bringing in the backup quarterback for Tennessee Tech and uh, getting it to Gist on a sweep play. Nothing there. Loss of five, second and 15. 
Saw Willie Miller change of pace at times in the 2019 season. He is a speedy sophomore out of Pinson, Alabama. Fisher with a low snap. Able to make the reception along the far side for Tennessee Tech. 82, Tanner Shriver, a new name for Tennessee Tech. 5'10", 175-pound freshman in the slot position. Nice tag by Bailey. Be careful with that snap, Dylan. There's been several snaps for Tennessee Tech from the center quarterback exchange in the gun that has been very low. Third down and seven for Tennessee Tech. Golden Eagles 0-1 on third down. They had that great field position. The high snap on the fumble, or the high snap on the punt, rather, gave Tech the ball at the 18 of Austin P. Golden Eagles ultimately missed the field goal. Set up a screen and a dangerous pass right there. It's Cordell Jackson, the preseason OVC Defensive Player of the Year. He read that one perfectly, and it was going to Quentin Cross, a 5'11", 175-pound sophomore for Tennessee Tech. And you'll see, here comes Cordell. He reads it very well and is right there. Lucky it was not intercepted, creating fourth down for Tennessee Tech. Golden Eagles feeling fortunate. That would have been six the other way. He had seven interceptions to pace the conference in 2019. One of the best defensive players in all the Ohio Valley Conference. Nice punt. Golden Eagle punt. Hayden Olsen. Oh, beautiful tackle by Tennessee Tech number 10, Cameron Hudson on the play. Great coverage. So Hudson is there after the Olsen punt. Cordell Jackson hauled it in, but meet Cameron Hudson. So the Tech special teams making the play, and it'll send us to a break in the action. All scoreless, six and a half minutes, first quarter in Cookville. And you'll see E is for everyone. And in state showdown on the gridiron, Tennessee Tech head coach Dwayne Alexander looks on as we take a look at the series history that is presented by Kentucky Wild. Partner with Kentucky Wild to protect wildlife heritage. Austin P. as the Golden Eagles had great coverage on the punt by Cam Hudson. So tough field position for APSU. Both teams doing a good job with field position. The one big play that we saw from Austin P, the 46-yard toss. Play action, reception made. There's Evans. So he barrels his way past the marker and collects a first down. Pretty good job there by Draylon Ellis, the freshman quarterback, getting that pass in between the zones of Tennessee Tech defenders and a good completion and a first down. Seeing the Govs move with pace so far. Again, Ellis, time closing quickly, and the pass is intercepted. The Golden Eagles get the pick as Tennessee Tech will take over. Jack Warwick on the interception. That's a name we've heard around Tennessee Tech for a long time, all the way back to Lonnie Warwick, NFL fame. And Jack being his grandson, Picking up the interception, just a really good zone coverage right there. Reading the quarterback size, young freshman quarterback. Jumped in front of the pass, interception. It's one thing to jump in front of it and to be in position to make an interception. For the guys that don't receive a lot of balls, to catch that ball, tuck it, and get up the field. Nice job. Jack Warwick. Sam noted the grandson, Lonnie Warwick, the purple people eaters, Minnesota <laughs> Viking. Brother Jake, a couple of years ago, Golden Eagle football player. So again, Tennessee Tech will have prime field position operating inside the Govs 20. Give goes Gist. Nice run right there by Cookville product, Day Day Gist up the middle. Good blocking by Tennessee Tech's offensive line. Second time, Dylan, Tennessee Tech has been in the red zone down here, see this time if they can do something with it. Austin Peay's defense, both defenses actually playing a very good game thus far. Tennessee Tech went three and out when they were in this position and ultimately missed a field goal. 24 yarder went by the books. 
Gain of six for Gist. Third year Golden Eagle. He's in the backfield. Fisher, call his number again, Gist, but stood up right at the line by the Govs defensive front. Good cross blitz by Austin P up the middle, Xing the linebackers. Tennessee Tech couldn't pick it up. Daddy looking for daylight up the middle, nothing there. Man to man on the outside with the receivers, making them, forcing them to want to throw it. Matthew Gale there, he's helped out by Kenneth Martin. The Golden Eagles faced with a third down after no gain on that play. Third and four for Tech. Fisher, some last words to his offensive line. Bailey looking to take it himself. Fisher diving across the five-yard line and does indeed pick up the first down. Nice pick up on the quarterback sweep in that situation. You got Dady Giss actually leading the play, just like the old fullback lead in the pro set formation. You can do that also out of the one back. You see Dady shift over. And Bailey sees him, makes the call based on the defense. Now you got Dede as a lead or pitch back. A nice decision by Bailey Fisher. Tennessee Tech has the ball at the five-yard line, knocking at the door for the Golden Eagles. The club's first football game in 455 days. OVC Slate moving to the spring. Fisher. Austin P though, right there to force him for a loss. I'm impressed with Austin P's middle front there, Dylan, and also the linebacking core really getting in on the defensive stops at the line. Quarterback draw, design quarterback draw. And one name we've not called yet, Metrius Fleming. Anxious to see him get involved in the game. Freshman last year, sophomore season this year, very talented young receiver for Tennessee Tech. Member of the OVC All-Newcomer team. He's a preseason All-OVC player. Sitting at the top of your screen in the slot position. He'll go in motion. Fisher, handoff, Gist, working hard near the end zone. But he'll fall just short at the two-yard line. Nice use of the motion there with Metrius flowing across. It could have been the jet sweep to Metrius. Instead, they give it to Gist up the middle. Got some solid yardage. We're two yards out and goal. Third down. Already collected one third down conversion on the drive. See if Fisher calls his own number. Tennessee Tech movement on the line. Push it back to the seven. Look to be number 76 for Tennessee Tech, Spencer Stratra. 6'4", 301 pound junior for Tennessee Tech. A little bit more room and not necessarily a bad situation on third down, for especially uh, as tough as Austin P has been to run on up the middle. Definitely look for Metris here in this situation or a Bailey Fisher run. Both these teams been knocking at the door in this game. No one's been able to break it down so far. Tex missed a short field goal. Austin P in the red zone had a fourth and one they were stopped. This a third and goal from the seven. Fisher. He'll look to run. Austin P though says not today, Bailey Fisher. It'll be fourth down. Not really a bad play. I think he thought about throwing right there at the end. Um, good coverage by Austin P in the end zone. Still have an opportunity for a field goal, so Fisher tucked it, took the loss, hopefully to get a field goal in his mind. There's Jack McDonald, one of the better linebackers in this league, the redshirt junior. So again, Olsen is out there. He missed a 24-yarder his first time. His second kick is a Golden Eagle. This time it's true. Good confidence builder, one for one in his freshman. Had to be pretty nervous coming into this game as a freshman kicker. And also I saw had the punting duties on, on the first uh, series. So Hayden Olsen splits the uprights from 25 yards out. Tennessee Tech takes a three nothing lead. Late stages first quarter. We'll be back at Tucker Stadium in just a moment. 
Tucker Stadium, the site, Cookville, Tennessee. COVID-19 protocols allowed up to 5,500 fans in attendance. That is one-third of the stadium. Looks like a pretty good crowd on hand. Really does, uh, and why not? Uh, 55 degrees, <laughs> first good weather we've had in the Upper Cumberland uh, for a long while, Dylan, and people celebrating that and getting out and supporting Tennessee Tech. Austin P. also bringing a pretty good crowd from Clarksville down to Tucker Stadium. A little under two-hour trip down I-40. Over in Clarksville for the 47th meeting in the all-time series. They were supposed to be, of course, a full slate first games of the year in spring football in the OVC, but everything else been canceled, or postponed, rather, to the open date March 7th. So this is the only game in the OVC schedule. Kick off by Olsen, and Nathan Page elects to bring it out of the end zone and dives across the 20-yard line. Another pretty good return right there by Page. Good coverage again by Tennessee Tech. Getting the ball back out to the 20-yard line. Tennessee State and Jacksonville State supposed to play Nashville. That postponed. You had SEMO hosting Murray and Cape Girardeau. That decision was made Wednesday. And then on Friday, Eastern Illinois, UT Martin. West Tennessee area has had a lot of weather hit there. I can't believe how much it was snowing and icy all weekend. All week, rather. It's just a beautiful, sunny day today. Love to see it. This one nearly intercepted again as Ellis almost had Relaford pick it off. Looked like a slant from the single side receiver position. And to D'Angelo Wilson again. And just a bit overthrown, actually behind him a little bit. Number five for Tennessee Tech was right there. Went through his hands. It's Josh Relaford. First career action for Draylon Ellis, the three-star prospect. Of Kirby High School, Olive Branch, Mississippi product. Handoff here on second down. That's Brian Sneed, a former Ohio State Buckeye. Third and long. Tennessee Tech looks uh, to me, Dylan, much improved in the defensive backfield. That one long throw, they let them get behind them. But other than that, they played, played a pretty solid pass defense, mainly from zone too deep. Defensive positions. A lot more speed in the secondary. Third and eight. Ellis steps up, fires for the reception, but that'll be just short. On the far side, it's Benico Harley. Here we are now in the same situation. Fourth and a long one. This is a tough one here. Um, the safe thing to do is send on the punt team, which I believe you're going to see. Just good job by Tennessee Tech knowing where the sticks are and making sure they threw it underneath, not giving them anything deep. Really good defensive battle so far. Well, Austin P. had, of course, a lot of trouble on the first punt. Snap that sailed over Matt Rigney's head. Ended up getting the Golden Eagle football at the 18-yard line. Tennessee Tech takes the timeout. Coach Alexander saw something he did not like and was running down the sideline and got to the referee finally and called the timeout. Speaking of Tennessee Tech coaches, Dylan, uh, you saw some changeover from last year with several of the Tennessee Tech coaches uh, making their way to another school, another fresh start. They've added Burt Brown, former Tennessee Tech uh, record-setting quarterback um, to the staff been a long-time high school coach and also in the college ranks. Uh, low, uh, nice to have alumni back into the program with Burt Brown being added there and several other uh, assistants being added, quality assistants being added to the program. Coach Alexander takes the time out, and he's going to make Rigney punt against the wind. So obviously with the quarter changeover, wants to make it a difficult punt. Got a penalty. Jiron Gilmore back there, and you can see that football just dies. We'll wait and see what the penalty is, though. 12-mile-an-hour win right into his face. Dylan makes it tough on the punters. The final play of the first quarter, but of course we'll see how much that is altered with this penalty here. 
think it was movement by Austin P. if I'm not mistaken. If not, it will be a first down for Austin P. if it's on tech. Well, so the Golden Eagles, 12 men on the field. And that penalty gives the Govs a first down. Austin P. offense will get back out there. That's a pretty big mistake after a timeout to have 12 people on the field and the coaches not notice that. That's an error um, Coach Alexander's not going to be very happy about. And your defense works so hard to get them in that situation of a fourth and short to make them punt and then make a mistake like that um, and, and just give them yards and a first down. After that punt against the wind, take a look at Coach Alexander, his third year guiding his alma mater. You can see he's just obviously not too thrilled about it. Tennessee Tech about to get great field position yet again. Learning experience there, no doubt. Changing ends of the field now. Going to make a, a, a difference with the punter. Kicking with the win now instead of against it when that comes up again. Well, the first quarter will come to a close. The clock winds down. We got a defensive battle early on. 25-yard field goal, Hayden Olsen. That's your score. Tennessee Tech leads Austin P. 3 to nothing. Scotty Walden, at the ripe age of 31 years old, the youngest coach in all of Division I football, was just the interim head coach at Southern Miss. Comes to this Govs program after an 11-win season in 2019. First play of the second quarter is a big one for Austin P. That's Brian Sneed into Golden Eagle territory down at the Tech 45. Nice pick up there for Sneed backing up Tanner at the tailback position. Sneed, six foot one, 203 pound red shirt sophomore. They go right back to him. Why not? He gets about two or three on the play. Definitely a bigger back for Austin P in this series. Started his career at Ohio State, then went to Iowa Western Community College, his third school now with Austin P. As Ellis zips it over the middle, the reception is made. Relifer trips up Evans, who nearly took it to the house. C.J. Evans right there, just a really good throw and catch from the freshman quarterback, Ellis. Hit him right on the spot in between the zone. Nice shoestring tackle by Tennessee Tech. Sneed, his third carry of the drive. Austin Peay's offensive line gets a pretty good push up the middle, moving the football with Sneed. Gain of three, Jack Warwick on the stop. Cubs have used tempo all afternoon. Sneed again. This time, though, he'll be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Nice push right there by Tennessee Tech's defense, specifically number one, Chris Tucker on the defensive side, 6'2", 275-pound senior for Tennessee Tech. Got a hold of him, held on, and brought him down for a loss. One of the leaders of the Golden Eagle team. He's a preseason All-OVC player. On the loss of three, a third and ten. First drive, second quarter. Remember, Austin P does have the wind at its back now. Ellis taking a shot for the end zone. Harley is there. He's got it. A 22-yard touchdown pass. Bonico Harley and the Govs take the lead. Harley one-on-one -on -one against right corner Gilmore for Tennessee Tech. Just a straight fade route. Did a good job of keeping the defender off of him. You'll get to see on the replay. Nice fake up the middle. Good stance in the backfield. In the pocket for the quarterback, just threw it to the corner pylon. Touchdown, Austin P. So the OVC's first ever spring touchdown is Bonico Harley. A 22-yard feed from the true freshman, Draylon Ellis. Muddle huddle here by Austin P. Trying to get a mismatch. A lot of things you can do off that muddle huddle if they're not properly defensed. You might get to see a few, a, little, a couple of those things today. Start 
It's Cole Deeds, the Mississippi State transfer. He was with Austin P, but only punted during the fall. First drive of the second quarter as Deeds tacks on. Austin P on a third and 10. They get the 22 yard touchdown pass. Ellis to the senior, Bonico Harley. First lead today for Austin P. Govs on top, seven to three. Just a good drive by Austin P right there. Nice execution. It's been a really good football game so far. Mostly defensive thus far. Austin P breaking through with a touchdown. As Dylan said, the first touchdown of the spring football season for the OVC. Let's take another look at it. A little play action over the top of Jiron Gilmore. Reception is made by Harley. He had a heck of a junior season. Seven receiving touchdowns. He also rushed for four and threw for one wow. in a playoff game against Sacramento State. It's a nice throw and catch right there also by the freshman quarterback, Ellis, for Austin P. Good poise in the pocket so far. Ashton Dodd. So we take a look at him, the redshirt freshman out of Hendersonville. Soars this one out of the end zone, uses the wind to his back. <laughs> Definitely. And the Golden Eagles will see their response, having it at the 25. That was one of the things that we said going into this game is how Austin P, the offensive line, could hold up against Tennessee Tech's defensive front because they have those receivers, the two seniors, Wilson and Benico Harley, could pose problems for Tennessee Tech, and we see it there. It's been a good battle up front both ways. Uh, big plays on both sides. Good battles on the defensive offensive fronts, both offense and defense for both teams. That's where the battles are won. That's where the games are won. But uh, Austin P being able to complete a few more passes and had a few more good runs has been the difference in the game thus far. So we now see Tennessee Tech's first drive of the second quarter. Bailey Fisher from the 25-yard line. Austin P bringing pressure, and Metrius Fleming, a big loss on the play. Matthew Gale is there. Cordell Jackson, imagine that, coming in uh, blitz. Jet sweep was coming this way with Metrius Fleming. I'm not sure if that's a, a design defensive effort for that particular play, but he did break through and got a hold of Metrius before the play got going. Nice defensive effort right there. Golden Eagles looking at Try to get the ball, and one of the better playmakers in the league, Mitri, is Fleming. But a loss of seven. You know, Cordell Jackson, 5'9", 188-pound senior, you know, playing an outside linebacker position, basically. And that'll be third and long as Giss gets tripped up right at the line. There's the freshman legs. Austin P. smelling blood a little bit. Tennessee Tech's going to have to recover third and very long. Make something positive happen here. Nothing bad. OVC football teams were allowed the option to play up to four non-conference games during the fall. Eastern Kentucky, well, they ended up playing pretty much a full schedule. They have opted out of the spring, leaving the conference, going to the A-Sun, which will take place along with Jacksonville State this summer. EKU played nine games. SEMO played one. Jacksonville State played four, and this Gov team did play three. Two against FBS schools in Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Golden Eagles did not play during the fall, and on third and long, Fisher will get sacked. Just nothing going in the pocket there for Bailey Fisher. It was man-to-man uh, -man on the outside. They manned up all the Tennessee Tech receivers and got a good blitz going and was able to get to Bailey pretty quick before he even had a chance to throw. You can see it right there on the replay. Just not very good blocking on the outside end for Tennessee Tech on a third and very long. That's Matthew Gale. Wreaked havoc all series right there. He had the stop with Metrius Fleming. And then on third down, gets the first sack of the football game. 
Gail being tough to handle right there on that series for Tennessee Tech. Now Tennessee Tech punting into a very stiff wind. And Cordell Jackson understanding that. He is at the Golden Eagle 45-yard line. Hey, Nelson being a freshman punter kicker for Tennessee Tech. Right into that win. It will fall well in front. I believe that might have graced an offensive player if my eyes are not deceiving me. Now they called it Austin P. That was Jared Key who picked it up for Tennessee Tech. Obviously the question is, did it touch a gov? We'll get another look at it. Here's a good replay. Didn't look like it. It hit someone there, Dylan. I'm not sure. They do have replay, am I correct? Up in the box here. We'll wait and see right now. Let's step away from the action. Govs lead 7-3. 10-23 to go until the half. Alongside Sam Brooks, Dylan Vazano here. The 2021 season opener, a little football in February for a seven game all OVC slate. Built in off week, which is now going to be very busy for the rest of the conference. March 7th, which is when the OVC basketball tournament is. Here is the look on that last punt. They're gonna say it remains Austin P football. As Jared Key picked it up, took a high hop off the tech turf. Thought maybe could have grazed someone. Not the case, though. And the Govs have it on the Golden Eagle side of the field. Handoff, near side, Sneed on the carry. Out across the 40 yard line, he is brought down by Josh Relliford. It's like about a five yard pickup for Sneed on the play. Tennessee Tech pursuit responding very actually a six yard pickup. Right back to him. Sneed diving forward right at the first down marker. There's no doubt with Sneed a big bulky body tailback they're wanting to get him the ball in the running game for Austin P and see what their offensive line can do against Tennessee Tech's DV line. Say so he does get enough for the first down. They move the chains. And the Cubs are driving. Sneed, his third straight carry, pushing forward across the 30. Sneed, an Ohio State transfer. You know, if he had the talent to get to Ohio State, uh, nice pickup for Austin P in the uh, offensive backfield. Consensus four-star prospect out of high school. Comes from Tampa and was ranked as the number four running back in the state. Golden Eagle movement, a free play, taking a shot. Goes incomplete, intended for Eugene Minter. A lot of contact down the sideline, but nothing called. Marcus McMeans for Tennessee Tech on the defense with a safety over the top. Number 12, Jerome Gilmore in on the play also. I didn't see a flag thrown there. Yeah, the freshman Ellis looked like the Golden Eagles jumped off sides. Took advantage of the free play. Beautiful day out here, Dylan. Pretty good crowd right there, as we mentioned before on both sides in Tucker Stadium. I guess if they picked up that flag and it's just an incompletion. So on a third down and seven, that one sails upstairs. Wide open to the tight end for Austin P. Just a little high. Brandon Lanier. Lanier. He's a freshman out of Cincinnati. He went up high for it, tried to pull it down, just overthrown just a bit. Did get his hands on it, so you, as a receiver, you want that one. And a fourth down for Austin P. Let's see if they go for the field goal. Cubs do have the wind at their back. Cole Deeds, the Mississippi State transfer. His first Austin P field goal. And a lengthy one. 47 yards out. 
The kick will go wide right. A little wide right and low on that kick. Cole Deeds transfer, as you said, from Mississippi State. Saw the good leg on the kickoff into the end zone with the wind behind him. Tennessee Tech will take over. Nice stop for Tennessee Tech in a 7-3 game. Golden Eagles will get the football back. Deeds misses the kick. We got a good one going in Cookville. Austin P leads 7-3. Second quarter action. Eagle having a good time. Along with his friend, Sam, I finally found out who that guy's name is. He's the nest keeper. The nest keeper. Okay. I didn't know that. You're one up on me. That makes sense. A little Golden Eagle theme as Tennessee Tech sets up a screen pass there. It's the first time we'll see the Michigan transfer, Kurt Taylor Jr. Yeah, I really been wanting to get a look at Kurt Taylor. Heard a lot about him already. And as you said, a Michigan transfer. And a nice little screen play for a good pickup for Tennessee Tech of six yards on his first play from scrimmage. Similar to Brian Sneed, who started his career at Ohio State. Kurt Taylor, Michigan. He also went to Iowa Central Community College, where he rushed for over 700 yards and three scores during his time there. Second and four. Fisher. And he'll dump it right back to Taylor. But Austin P snuffs it out, and Taylor stopped for a third down. Little Utah pass by Bailey Fisher. Back to Taylor now. Taylor, 5'10", 205 pounds, but if you see him without the pads on, he is a man. Hey, he was the first recruit for Jay Harbaugh, the son of Jim, who yeah. was the running backs coach at Michigan. <laughs> nice fact there, Dylan. There you go. <laughs> Third and two. Just one of five, the Golden Eagles, on third downs today. Hand off, Taylor trucking his way across the 40. He's got enough for the first down. Met two yards deep in the backfield, Dylan. Taylor just kept his feet going. Likewise, I see out of him already, number one for Tennessee Tech. Got the first down, much needed first down. One out of five, as Dylan said, that makes it two out of six. So Tennessee Tech on the move. First time we've seen Taylor after Gist. Is that a bulk of the Golden Eagle running? Pretty impressed so far, Dylan. Both teams with the ball possession, ability to move the ball. Not too many mistakes thus far. Again, Taylor in the backfield. Fisher may be changing the play at the line. Fleming in motion. Taylor, again the handoff. His fourth straight carry. He'll be brought down right at the line, though. Number 18 for Austin P. breaking through the line quickly. Not sure. Don't think it was a blitz, but he got through there. That's Jack McDonald. Got through and caused the penetration, made him adjust his route on the running play. Nice play for Austin P. defense. Tennessee Tech and had the opportunity to speak with Tech head coach Dwayne Alexander a little bit earlier in the week. Said wanted to find a way to have time of possession, eat some clock, huddle up. A lot different than we what we are seeing from the Austin P offense. They've been quick tempo all game. No doubt. Taylor, they just keep going right back to him. Makes a nice cut into the inside, spins his way across the 45. Kurt Taylor, very shifty. Uh, got the ball out on a quick screen to the tailback out of the backfield. He picked up a few yards, making it a third and seven again for Tennessee Tech. Jack McDonald, former tight end, All-American, honorable mention by Hero Sports last year. Second in the conference with 116 total tackles. One of the anchors of a very strong Gov defense. Took home the OVC title. Fisher, third down and seven. Bailey, rolling, pressure. Fisher going to try to get the first down himself, dives near it, and let's see where they spot him. It's Cordell Jackson there to greet him. They're going to say went out of bounds about four yards short, must have touched the sideline as he was running down through there. 
Going to be a fourth and four for Tennessee Tech, and they'll send on the punt team. And that's sort of a ball game so far. Field position, it's a defensive battle. You see 7 3. Nice area of the field if you're going to fake a punt. Nice area to think about it. Zayden Olsen. And Cordell Jackson is back. Austin P, though, making sure he does indeed punt it. Jackson calling for the Fumble. ball's on the ground. Let's see who's got it. Golden Eagle football. Tennessee Tech picks up the fumble. I see no flags on the field, and they were pretty close to the receiver, but it being blocked into him, really. The fair catch called for there, Bailey, and he couldn't handle it. You see the replay right there. Just tried to make a dive at the last minute to get his hands on it. Seth Carlisle right on the play there for Tennessee Tech. All that win, Jackson. Going to go a long way to try to field that punt. So Tennessee Tech, Golden Eagles get their second turnover of this game. And good field position for the purple and gold. Marcus McMeans, I believe, on the fumble recovery there for Tennessee Tech. Ball to 29. Fisher looking to step up in the pocket, greeted by the Govs. Austin P doing a really good job in the defensive front of staying in their lanes. Number 96 right there, snuffing that out for Austin P. Ty K's legs again. We mentioned his name a couple times. Looked like uh, Bailey Fisher for Tennessee Tech wanted to get it to the tailback again on the speed screen with blockers out in front, but a defensive lineman was in the way, forcing him to run up the middle with no gain. Actually, a loss of two. Second down and 12 for Tech. Fisher just four of seven for 19 yards in this first half. Three and a half to go in the quarter. Fisher. Taking a shot deep, just over the outstretched try for Tennessee Tech. It's Kurt Taylor. Yeah, Kurt Taylor up the sideline, uh, just uh, out and up for Tennessee Tech. I've seen that play a bunch. For some reason, Taylor stopped running up the sideline, or he would have been wide open. You got 14 crossing the field. Taylor stopping right there instead of running on in the end zone. Had he ran on, it would have been a very easy catch and touchdown for Tennessee Tech. So third down and 12. Tough spot in the field with the wind at their back for the Golden Eagles. The freshman kicker, Hayden Olsen. Fisher dumping it off to Gist. Falls far short of the first down. Nice job by the Austin P defense keeping everything in front of them in this situation, creating a fourth and about seven, six, Long six for Tennessee Tech, and they will bring on the field goal team. It'll be a 38-yard try. Into a pretty nice wind. Certainly a blustery day in the Upper Cumberland. You take this over all that snow and ice. Temperatures the, in the teens all week. And ice. <laughs> I can take snow, Dylan, but ice I don't like. Austin P will call a timeout. We'll take it as well. A 38-yard field goal attempt by Hayden Olsen when we return. The Eagles say, hey, let's rethink this decision. We're going to go for it. Fourth down and seven. Fisher, he's got time. Starts to run out, though. He will be sacked. Austin P, and the Golden Eagles turn it over on downs. It's Kobe Perry, the Troy transfer. Too much penetration, not enough time for Baby Fisher in pocket. Not, don't know anything else he could have done there, but eat it right here. You see the collapse of the pocket, and there's the pressure coming right there. Might have got a throw off very early. Must have been good coverage downfield by Austin P's defensive backfield. 
So the Golden Eagles roll the dice. And I mean, you think it's a 38 yard field goal for a freshman kicker into the win. Don't hate the decision there by Coach Alexander. No, I, I like the call. Um, long, hard conversion. Got to have a pretty good play, good execution right there to make it happen or at least have a chance. But if you don't, not bad field position. Austin P. now will take over after forcing the Golden Eagles on downs. Ellis, the freshman, his first career start. There is a reception as Wilson hauls it in. Dancing his way to the near sideline before running out of bounds at the 44. D'Angelo, one of the pregame players of the, to look at, to watch, and we definitely got to see a lot of him today. Shifty receiver for Austin P. Just a nice little slant route. They've run it a bunch today, right in between the zone of the linebacker and the defensive back for Tennessee Tech, and they've hit it three or four times already. Wilson, second grab, that goes for 17. Play action, Ellis taking a shot for Harley, way overthrown. Yeah, that's what you want to see in the backfield for Tennessee Tech, not letting those offensive receivers get behind them. And for Austin P, I I believe it was number eight, trying to get down the sideline to make, really it was, uh, looked like a post pattern. I don't know if he just overthrew it with the wind or the wrong route was ran. Harley, who has the 22-yard touchdown reception, the lone TD in the contest. Second and 10 from the 45-yard line. Give to Sneed. Short pickup there will force third and long. Really the first time that Sneed's touched the ball that Tennessee Tech has kept in the, a couple of yards, creating third down and a long nine for Austin P. Gov's content to let the clock run a little bit here. C.J. Evans coming in. Surprised at all by Austin P. not really being a, that aggressive in this situation? Not really. I, I think they're playing a pretty good calculated game plan, and they want to stick with it. Here's where they're dangerous. Ellis avoids the sack, throws incomplete. Seth Carlisle breaks it up. I'm telling you, Seth Carlisle for – Tennessee Carlisle for Tennessee Tech, middle linebacker, just having a really good game. He's all over the field. Nice play on the defensive pass. Fourth down for Austin P, and they'll send in their punt team. Good defensive series there for Tennessee, Tennessee Tech after turning that ball over on fourth down. One first down for Austin P, and then a fourth down punt. Matt Rigney is on. Good look at Seth Carlisle right there, a local product out of Macon County. Will have the win at his back. Jiron Gilmore, the Tech freshman. He will watch this one roll out of bounds. It's a good punt there by Rigney. Rugby style kick. We're seeing a lot of that with punt teams today. Kind of position and aiming the ball instead of letting them return. And good look at Coach Alexander right there for Tennessee Tech in his third season. Big improvement last season for Tennessee Tech. One of the most improved teams in the nation. You're talking about a Tech team that had back-to-back 1-10 -back seasons. Coach Alexander guided the Golden Eagles to 6-6 six six in 2019. First non-losing season and most wins since that 2011 championship campaign. Yeah, a couple good recruit, recruiting classes uh, that have come in, building a solid foundation for the program. A lot of folks around this area happy about that hire and Coach Alexander and the job that he's done so far. If you just think, not just Coach Alexander, or today for Austin P. Scotty Walden, but coaches everywhere trying to play football this past fall and then here in the FCS level during the spring, all of the other outside distractions and challenges, COVID-19 protocols, testing, everything of that nature, a lot more than football this spring is Day-Day Gist there. Who will be dropped behind the line? And imagine that, number 13 for Austin P. Cordell Jackson with a tackle behind the line, having an excellent game, chasing Day-Day Gist down from his outside linebacker position. So the Golden Eagles seem content here. This really has been a defensive battle. The wind is against Tech here. Here's it, the Golden Eagles who will get the ball to start the second half. 
they'll be fine going down 7-3 into the locker room. It's tough starting off a, a series of plays losing three or four yards, and that's happened uh, uh, several times to Tennessee Tech today. Offensive – or Austin P's defensive lineup causing that. So we'll hand it off to Gist again. Should be the final play of the first half. First OVC football game for anyone in the conference this spring. How about a defensive battle? Austin P7, Tennessee Tech 3. It's been a fun first half in Cookville. We've got much more to come, though. A halftime show coming up next on ESPN+. Plus. Austin P with a 7-3 advantage back here in Cookville, Tennessee. As we get ready to go to start the third quarter. Well, we spotlighted him to begin the game. That is your OVC preseason offensive player of the year. Sam D'Angelo Wilson, of course, had that big 49-yard reception. Overall, two catches. He's been targeted three times by the freshman quarterback, Draylon Ellis. Yeah, and uh, the interception, uh, I think we made the uh, the ball was going to him at that time, too. They definitely want to get the ball in his hands. He's a good route runner, fast down the uh, field, as you can see. Got behind two Tennessee Tech defenders. Biggest play of the game right there. Austin P, which defeated Tennessee Tech when these two teams met in 2019, right at this field, 58-19. to He had three touchdown receptions in the game and over 160 receiving yards. That was a career high. Draylon Ellis, first Start for the freshman quarterback. His number 7 of 15 for 131 yards. He has a touchdown. I went to Benico Harley on a third and 10, 22-yard touchdown pass. He's also thrown an interception. Leading rusher in the game, seven carries for 43 yards. That's the senior, Ahmad Tanner. For the Golden Eagles, Bailey Fisher has gone 5 of 9 for just 24 yards. And Tech's leading rusher with only 9 yards. That's David Gist. Right out of Cookville on eight carries. I think that's a missing uh, part of the equation for Tennessee Tech is the downfield throws from Bailey Fisher and even, uh, you know, his running ability. They've they really held him uh, to no yards running and passing. So Cole Deeds, he will get ready to kick it off with the wind gusts about 15 miles an hour. They have to replace it on the team. David Gist is back for the Golden Eagles, and so is Kurt Taylor Jr. Or no, check that, rather, it's Demetrius Fleming. Second half in the season opener. Short kickoff, kicking against the win. And Tennessee Tech will start off at the 25-yard line. After Slater Howard, redshirt junior out of Brentwood. Fair caught it. TTU good field position as they start with the win behind them, which has been pretty important in this game thus far. Obviously have the preseason all-OVC quarterback, Bailey Fisher, one of the more dynamic quarterbacks in the league. What are you looking at for this Tennessee Tech offense as we start the third? You got to mix it up just a little bit more, maybe, uh, you know, get some downfield passes. Austin P just doing a really good job of, of getting pressure on the quarterback has been the real difference. It's not anything that Tennessee Tech's doing. They just got to alleviate that pressure on the quarterback. Fisher's first pass attempt of the second half. He's got a wide open man, and reception is made. Justin Odin hauls it in. The Golden Eagles, a promising beginning to start the third. Yeah, nice job. Three receivers on, up on the top side, the far side for Bailey Fisher. There's the protection that he has to have in order to deliver the football. And uh, one thing still that we have not called out at all is Metrius Fleming, very good player for Tennessee Tech in his sophomore year. They got to get the ball in his hands if they want some uh, points on the board. So look to see that happen this half too. A gain of 20, Tennessee Tech's longest play this afternoon. Golden Eagles near midfield. Fisher. He'll throw that one into the turf. Day-Day Gist around the action. You know, Dylan, what Austin P is doing is they're saying, hey, 
we're pretty good in the defensive backfield. So we're going to man you up, put a free safety over the top, and if you can beat us, then you're going to beat us. That's what's giving them such good run support against the Tennessee Tech running attack. They're just playing a straight man-to-man out here the majority of the time and uh, daring Tennessee Tech to throw them. They sacked Fisher four times in that first half. Second and ten, low snap, Fisher. Throws it along the near side. It's Odin again into Austin P territory. Getting it down to the 49. Double slant right there to the two-receiver side. Bailey Fisher hooking up. You can see they've changed the game plan a little bit. They're going to force the throw on the ball. They've got to. If they're going to man everybody up and put them in the box with only one free safety over the top, they've got to throw the football and have some success doing it. Third down and short for the Golden Eagles. Ball officially spotted at the... Austin P 48 yard line. It'll be a third down and three here for Tennessee Tech. Gist in the backfield. Fisher on third down. Bailey rolling. Throws and it will be juggled, dropped after it was deflected and goes incomplete. That time I felt like Bailey had plenty of protection in the pocket. Looked like he had a really good pocket and should have stayed in there. But he has been running all game, having to get out of the pocket. Just a mistake right there, especially on a third down and short situation. And that's going to bring on the punting team for Tennessee Tech exactly what they did not want to happen. Almost came up with the ball, <laughs> juggling a little bit there at the end. Odin almost came up with it on that play. Golden Eagles targeting him three times on the drive. He had a couple of receptions. So the wind at its back, the freshman Hayden Olsen. Multiple all-region player in high school out of Buford, Georgia. There is Benico Harley, Austin P receiver, but good coverage by the Golden Eagle punt unit. Tennessee Tech with Jamal Singleton. He makes the stop. Very nice play right there, Tennessee Tech. Jamal Henderson looked like he was going to get outside a little bit, but he got on his legs and brought him down, brought the big man down. So Austin P. will have field position inside its own 10-yard line. Govs leading this game 7-3, an OVC sprint, just a seven-game season. FCS football all around opening up this weekend. It's normally 24 teams that make the FCS playoffs in this spring season. It's down to 16. Golden oh. Eagles, let's see where they put that one down at the one-yard line. Tennessee mm. Tech gets a sack. He ended up in the end zone on the sack, number 91 for Tennessee Tech on the play. Henry Karamu carried him into the end zone, but... His forward progression was stopped where they marked it. Pretty good call, I think, right there. See if Tennessee Tech provides some pressure up the middle for the young freshman quarterback for Austin P. Probably going to hand it off to the tailback, see what they can get out of this. Ball at the one. Sneed looking to give the Gov some room. He is able to do just that. Spotted down at the eight. And a gain of seven. Big time mistake there by Cameron Hudson. The cornerback letting him get outside. His only job right there is to keep the run inside. And he was able to get outside and give them a little bit more room. Third down and nine now for Austin P. Golden Eagles could get good field position out of this. Remember, stiff win. Austin P would have to punt right into it. Ellis changing the play at the line. Third down and nine. The rookie steps up, fires to Wilson. And a first down, Austin P. This is the same play they've run probably four times now. Limping off the field. No, he's going to stay on. Gov's going quick. Carry goes Sneed. Across the 20 and forced out of bounds. Not a big pickup there by Sneed, but, you know, three or four yards out of nothing, really breaking it outside, using his speed. 
as you said, a four-star athlete coming out of high school, signing with Ohio State. Played a couple of games with the Buckeyes as a freshman and went to Iowa Western Community College. Finds himself in Clarksville. Right up the middle again. It's Snead. Haven't seen a whole lot of Ahmad Tanner since the first few drives. Jack Warwick on that tackle. Down fifth, going to create about a third and a short two for Austin P. Probably going to stay with Snead, I would. Cubs got to get to the 30 yard line. Sneed playing in all three fall games for Austin P this year. Brandon Lanier coming in to the tight end position. Strong running set. Ellis will keep it himself. Darts his way to a first down. And across the 40 yard line, Austin P moves the chains. Nice read by the quarterback using Sneed up the middle to create the linebackers to attack on the tailback. And he read that. Defensive end stepped down, pulled it, and went outside. Josh Relliford got the stop. Ellis, all sorts of running room into Tennessee Tech territory and then some. Ellis crosses the 40-yard line, and the Govs have some cooking here early in the third. Just a really good job by Ellis. He wanted to throw that ball downfield. Good coverage by Tennessee Tech. Defensive backfield and linebackers in their zones. Ellis saw that, saw a hole, hit it, and he knows what to do with the football when he pulls it down. The three-star dual-threat quarterback showing off the wheels the last couple of plays. That a gain of 20. To the Tech 39. Ellis, oh, nice spin move there. He's going to run for the third consecutive play, and Ellis ducking out of bounds at the 33. You saw Tennessee Tech with a blitz coming from outside, and Ellis faked the throw, got the defender off his feet up high, did a little spin move as you'll see right here. Better for the defender just to make the tackle, not to jump to, for that football. Ellis got him up, got outside, created a good pickup. So a gain of six and a second and four. Austin Peake, courtesy of their freshman quarterback, they're on the move. Ellis throwing, reception is made, it's Wilson again. Good crossing route by Wilson on the motion. Coming all the way across the field. Took a little while for that play to develop. Ran the high side receivers off on fades and brought him across the field and connected on the pass. First down, Austin P on the 16. Marcus means on the tackle. Ellis again, another run. The freshman quarterback breaks it, dives, and a touchdown. Same play we saw back at midfield on the big pickup. Fake it to Snead up the middle. Read the defensive end. Defensive end collapsed on the handoff to the tailback. He reads that. Ellis reads it, pulls it, makes a cut. Back up to the left side of the field. You'll watch here. Good cut here. Good vision of the field. Saw a lane. Hit it quick. Touchdown, Austin P. 16-yard rushing touchdown. Ellis, who almost single-handedly after the Golden Eagles had the ball at the one-yard line, Austin P. They go right down the field, cash it in as the extra point is good, and the Govs have opened it up to a 14-3 advantage. Altogether, pretty nice drive there by Austin P, you know, down to the one yard line at one point and just a, a good drive, good execution all the way, held on to the football, good play calling, good execution by the front and a nice drive for Austin P to make it a 14 to three football game. Tennessee Tech gonna have to do something quick to get back. 14-3, Govs lead, we'll step away here in the third. 10 play, 92 yard drive by Austin P after a Golden Eagle sack, put it at the one yard line. Austin P ends up going 99 yards after that point. Huge reason why the freshman Draylon Ellis, not so much what he did with his arm, with his legs. 
Super dynamic. No doubt. And using uh, Snead and his success as a decoy mostly on that series. You're going to have, have a high kick here. Nice job right there by Tennessee Tech, number four. That's a, that's a tough one in the wind right there. Good job picking that. Fair catch up. That's Jamal Singleton for Tennessee Tech on the fair catch. A little chip kick by Deeds with having to kick against the wind. So, again, the Golden Eagles will have good field position, trailing this game 14-3. to Noted earlier, but it's the first Tennessee Tech football game in 455 days. Seems like a, a long while. <laughs> Austin P playing in the fall, and, of course, the Govs, their extended playoff run. Won two games in the FCS playoffs, becoming the 10th OVC team in history to do that. Against Furman, and then went to number three, Sacramento State. Got a win in California. Fisher fumbles on the sack. Adam Browner, though, is able to pick it up for Tennessee Tech. Let's watch Browner turn this into something. It is a loss, but could have been much worse for Tennessee Tech. Yeah, that ball laid on the ground a long time. Adam Browner uh, recognizing it, had a blitz from the top side, either a blitz or someone got through uh, unscathed to the Bailey Fisher. Bailey Fisher never saw him. A good hit from the blind side, knocked the ball loose. As I said, was on the ground for a while. Very lucky Tennessee Tech got it back, but it puts them in a similar situation that they've seen the whole game of second and very long. It is already the fifth Austin P. sack, continuing to apply pressure against Fisher and company. Demetrius Fleming still dealing without a reception this whole game. And blanketed all afternoon. Fisher throws to Fleming here. But again in the backfield as Austin P puts up another big play defensively. Fisher looking very rushed today. Not a lot of time in the pocket. Had some pretty good time there. Good coverage downfield in the man-to-man -man defense by Austin P's secondary. There's Jonathan Edwards, the Northeast Mississippi Community College transfer. Tennessee Tech needing to get to the Austin P 48 yard line. Pick up a first down. Third and 19 for Tennessee Tech. Fisher steps up, pressure. Fisher rolling, throwing. It's Fleming, the reception. Golden Eagles get the first down. Fisher finds Fleming still on his feet and down to the 26. Exactly why they want to get the ball in his hands. Austin P's done a great job of keeping out of his hands. He's got two receptions this series, and you can see folks watching on ESPN+. Plus. He's special when he gets that ball in his hands. Had a great season as a freshman last year. Bailey Fisher breaking the pocket, getting it downfield, finding Fleming. Fleming knows what to do with it when he gets it in his hands. 41-yard reception. Cam Ruffin brings him down. That is exactly why you were talking about finding a way to connect with Metrius Fleming. Golden Eagles now on the move. First and 10. Here's Fisher. Again, some pressure. And that'll be a flag as Gist went his direction. The Austin P defender a little bit early there. Yeah, nowhere to go right there for Bailey. Stood in the pocket pretty good that time. Not sure. Uh, must Here we get the call. It's Troy Henderson, Jr., the Syracuse transfer. Didn't really see that in the backfield. I saw Bailey uh, Fisher complaining <laughs> about something, so uh, roughed him up a little bit. Big break for Tennessee Tech down in the red zone again. Looks like about the 13 going in for Tennessee Tech and a first down. Troy Henderson, Jr., wearing number zero. That's a new thing as of this past fall. First time that you could wear number zero on the football yeah. field. Yeah. That is a little different. <laughs> different, right? So after the Austin P penalty, Fisher Touchdown. throwing end zone. Gist unable to haul it in. Wide open in his hands. 
Receivers out there, use your hands, not your body. Don't let that ball touch your body. Day Day Gist, a local product, had it right where he wanted. Beautiful pass, beautiful execution by Bailey Fisher. He's going to be wanting that back for a long time. Day Day, usually a very sure handed receiver. Too good to be true. Defender right in front of him may have gotten his view, but no excuse for uh, not catching that one. Second down and 10. Six and a half to go, third quarter. Gist in the backfield. Fisher, play action, zipping it to Metrius Fleming. Makes a move, Fleming to the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. Fisher to Fleming. Dylan, we said it the whole game. You have, in my mind, that's one of, if not the best football players on the field in uh, Metrius Fleming. And you got to get the ball in his hand, whatever you got to do. And this is just a little fake to the uh, backside. Fleming is outside coming in on the split screen. And just a beautiful pass by Bailey Fisher catching him on the run. And as I've said all game, he knows what to do when he gets it in his hands. You said had, it, had a reception all game. And then right after that, he goes off for three, 52 yards, the 13-yard touchdown. And a one-score game again in Cookville. A new, new offensive coordinator, Doug Malone. Of course, he's not new to that position with a Grey Cup ring on his hand. Um, Really trying to figure out what to do against this tough Austin P defense, and they have been tough. They've executed very well on the defensive side of the football, but finally breaking through and making a good drive, making it a pretty good football game if they hit this extra point, 14-9 right now. Hayden Olsen. His first career extra point is up. It's through. It's a 14-10 ball game. The Golden Eagles respond. Metrius Fleming, welcome to the 2021 season. The 13-yard touchdown reception, and it is now a 14-10 game. 6.22 to go, third quarter in Cookville. Boy, Metrius Fleming getting involved. He caught three passes for 52 yards and a touchdown. Overall, the Golden Eagles, five plays, 58 yards. Sam, let's not forget that third and 19. Fisher buying all sorts of time. The big play, Demetrius Fleming. Yeah, last year, all year long, Bailey Fisher making it happen with his legs, and he actually did that one time in a big play for Tennessee Tech that really uh, made that whole series happen. Short kickoff here, fielded at the five-yard line. Austin P. they've got something with a big-time return. Out of Jay Parker. Very nice return. Created a good gap up the middle for Parker. And uh, his first return, I believe, and he uh, hit it hard, got out wide. Really lucky he didn't break it all the way because it looked like it might go. Oh. A legal block in the back. <laughs> So wipe away a large portion of that Jay Parker return. It seems like most times on the kickoff returns, if somebody breaks one, that tends to be <laughs> that tends to be why anymore. Well, such a defensive battle, 7-3 at the half. The two teams now kind of opened it up offensively. Golden Eagles getting a couple of their preseason all OVC players going. Bailey Fisher, the impressive drive, and of course what Metrius Fleming was able to accomplish. So much X and O talking football sometimes. Hey, let your best players go to work. And for Tennessee yeah. Tech, Fleming and Fisher, if they're not their best players, they are right up there in that conversation. Yeah, today's game, it's all about just creating mismatches. No huddle. Coach is calling it from the sideline. You know, it's it's really a cool chess, mass, chess match. That is a delay of game. Really cool chess match now. Um, Offenses are pretty much the same, and uh, teams are getting a lot better at defending that spread uh, as time goes on, getting more defensive backs in the game that can tackle also. So now Draylon Ellis will go back to work. First play is a handoff right up the middle. 
Diving forward, that is C.J. Evans Jr., the 5'9 freshman. I think it's really cool for C.J. Evans. He'll always have with everything that happened in 2020. What was the first football play, first college football play after everything that happened in 2020 what was him taking a 75-yard touchdown yeah. against Central Arkansas? That's yeah. pretty cool for him. It, it really was, and cool to watch it, you know, on TV and see it happen, knowing that it was an OVC player. I guess at that point, I mean – Big Ten had opted out, Pac-12 had opted out. You, you just didn't know how much or if there would be a college football season. I tell you, this past year has just been incredible in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, just an unfortunate for so many to have to, you know, rearrange how they live their life. Set up the screen for Evan. Seth Carlisle, though, he's the first to greet him. A lot of things going on in that play. A lot of motion, misdirection, and Tennessee Tech did a good job in the defensive line, especially Seth Carlisle at the linebacker position, staying home and on his man, which was the tailback, picked him up on the screen, broke through the blocking to make a good tackle. Boy, Seth is really beefed up this year. Yeah, the former quarterback, Macon County. <laughs> good quarterback. He's had a great game so far. I feel like we've called his name really a lot has. of times today. So here's the Austin P punt out of Rigney. Wynn's got it. Tennessee Tech's got to be careful. Golden Eagles will start inside Austin P territory. First, though, we will have a break in the action. It's turned into a very good one at Tucker Stadium. The season opener, four-point game. 4.30 left in the third. Everyone. Bailey Fisher directing a five-play, 58-yard drive last time he had the football. Overall, there's a look at his numbers. Found a groove with Fleming last drive. Fisher taking a shot deep. Wanted Fleming and a flag on the play. Just to go route, had a couple options up short. On the right side, we got a flag. Let's see what it is. Obvious it was pass interference. He basically tackled Fleming down the right side. Looked like Fleming was wanting to come back as Bailey Fisher got out of the pocket. Bailey got a good stop right there and just let Fleming go one-on-one. -on -one. Looked like he kind of reached out and tackled him because if he hadn't, it might have been a touchdown. It's Isaiah Norman. Maybe the best cover corner that the Govs have. 6-1 redshirt junior. Number 84th prospect out of the state of Tennessee. Cordova High School. Yep. Got to see him play in the state playoffs up here on overall field back in the day. Kurt Taylor Jr. in the backfield. Golden Eagles have the ball at the 32-yard line. Fleming on the end around, darting his way to the 20-yard line. Metrius Fleming, first down, Tennessee Tech. Looks like Tennessee Tech has gotten back to the game plan. Get it in number seven's hands. Yeah, it's like every play now. Golden Eagles going his direction, that time on the run. Gain of 12. You got Michael Jordan on the field, you better give him the ball, right? <laughs> he could not have had really a better start to his college football career. He won the OVC Newcomer of the Week Award four of the first six weeks. Fisher dancing around. A flag is down. This reception is made and into the end zone right there. I believe it's going to be called back for holding in the backfield. That was Bradley Clark. But it is holding. I could see it in the backfield. Bailey doing a good job of getting in and out of the traffic. Um, but Tennessee Tech's offensive line doing a much better job. And there was the hold, number 76, grab a hold of the back of his jersey so he wouldn't get to his quarterback, and that was the call. Otherwise, it would have been a touchdown for Tennessee Tech. As it stands, first down and a long 20. Now 
Tennessee Tech a touchdown on its last drive. Golden Eagles forced a three and out. Ball at the 30. Fisher. Here comes the blitz and he goes down. Troy Henderson Jr. Austin P. Sixth sack of the ball game. Just great coverage by the defense. There's, Bailey had plenty of time to throw that football right there. Number eight, you could he broadcast he was coming from the deep position. Number zero, Henderson, I'm sorry. Um, got to him before Bailey could get rid of the ball. Just as a quarterback, you, you got to get rid of Throw it away, get rid of it. Um, you know, throw it to the nearest back in the ground. You can't take a sack like that when you're first and 20 to begin with. So the Golden Eagles seriously backed up here. Second down and 29. Fisher. Along the far side, there's Clark the catch. Pretty nice grab right there by Clark. Not a big pickup. Got a few yards back, creating the third down. Tennessee Tech hoping to get a few more yards. You got the win behind you. Get five or ten yards right here. Have a chance at a field goal to make it a one-point game for Tennessee Tech. Be tough, but it has been done. <laughs> It'd be tough to get the first down, but same similar or same situation as last series for Tennessee Tech, and they converted in this situation. Demetrius Fleming. Wanted their back for the Golden Eagles. See how much they're able to get here, if any. Third and 26. More Austin P pressure and yet another sack. The seventh for this Govs defense. Yeah, only thing that you couldn't let happen right there was a sack, loss of more yards. I believe you're out of field goal position in this situation, even with this win. Terrell Lucas, the Duke transfer, getting involved. Henderson there as well. Boy, seven sacks in this game. This Austin P defense and that front, they have certainly come to play this afternoon. Yeah, they've been all over Bailey Fisher. A couple of times he's had some time, just nobody opened downfield. So Hayden Olsen, he will prepare the punt. Benico Harley back. Harley will let it take a hop. Hudson trying to save. Nice play. Cam Hudson was there, but it did indeed go in the end zone is what they're going to rule, so it will be a Ooh, touchback. I do not know about that. Let's check it out right here. Looks like he had his foot said. in. He was on this side. Uh, that's a bad call right Ooh. there. I'll just say it. That is a bad call. Hudson just finding out about it, it looks like. That was such a good play by Cam Hudson. That's a shame you're not rewarded for a good effort and play like that. So the ball at the 20. Ellis. There's Wilson. Goes through his fingertips, though. Pass slightly behind him. Yeah, you don't see that happen a lot with Wilson. It's really good throw right there. And that uh, the same play they've been running the whole time against that Tennessee Tech zone. And... Uh, one of the few times they didn't come up with a connection. Got four grabs for 94 yards for the preseason OVC Offensive Player of the Year. That's saying a bunch. All-American season last year, 2019 that is. Ellis, this one will be picked off by Josh Relaford. Tell you Dylan, that's an incredible play right there, breaking on the ball and with that force coming at him and not being a, a receiver uh, as a defensive back, putting your hands together in the right way, stepping up and catching that football. Nice job. Big play for Tennessee Tech. Now the offense has got to do something with the football. Quit making mistakes that takes you out of position. Golden Eagles get their third turnover of this game. This will be the fifth time that Tennessee Tech has started on Austin P's side of the field. Started a drive on the Gov side. 
they've only been able to score three points in the previous four drives in this situation. Yeah, my mind highlighted the game for Tennessee Tech is their defensive play. Uh, they've been on the field a lot, and they've answered the call many times, especially here with another interception and a turnover against Austin P. in great field position. Second-year Golden Eagle, Josh Relaford. Tennessee Tech now on offense. Fisher, catch, made, Fleming. There is a flag down as he gets inside the 10. We'll wait and see the marker. want to take anything away from Austin P. They played a really good defensive game, and they're causing these things to happen. But uh, Tennessee Tech is just really self-inflicting these wounds. Um, I, I couldn't see where that took place right there. It was called by the um, back judge there. Called him a hole and must have grabbed hold of some jersey. And here we go again, Tennessee Tech in a long yardage situation, first and 20 again. In the final minute of the third quarter, and a four-point game, the OVC and season opener here in the spring. Fisher taking a shot toward the end zone, and that one is picked off. Jonathan Edwards and returns it across the 30. Another flag is down. That's Tech's first turnover. It's going to be rough in the passer, I believe. The tables turn a little bit, Dylan, and Austin P. self-inflicting a wound there in a situation where you had a turnover, erasing that great field position by Tennessee Tech, giving it back to them. Nice job by the free safety coming over from center field, reading the eyes of the quarterback and making the interception, but all for not, as Tennessee Tech will have the ball on the 17-yard line going in. Critical Austin P penalty. Golden Eagles keep the possession. Fisher looks to the sideline. He's got Gist in the backfield. Fleming, top of your screen. Low snap. Picked up there by Gist. Spinning his way across the 10-yard line. Low snap, definitely something they're going to have to work on this week. The center has had the exchange been very low several times. Bailey Fisher's done a good job even getting the snap a couple of times. Dady Gist right there doing a good job. Heads up play, picking that ball up on a design play up the middle, sticking with it and getting some good, well, about seven yards on the first down play. Well, it Hello, sets I'm things Chad up Miles. for a very interesting fourth quarter. Golden Eagles will have a second and three. Tennessee Tech knocking at the door. We'll see you for the fourth quarter on ESPN+. Plus. Second and three. The Austin P. 10-yard line, Bailey Fisher. Fourth quarter, four-point ball game. How about this for the first football game of the spring? Austin P with eight in the box, man-to-man, -man, free safety over the top. Handoff goes Gist. See where they spot it. Appears to be a yard short of the first down. Third and one. Tennessee Tech going back with a quick huddle to keep Austin P's defense off the field. Fisher, quarterback keeper. They'll have enough for the first down. Golden Eagles move the chains. Big play right there for Tennessee Tech on the first down. Third down and a long one yard, getting first down and converting. First and goal here for the Golden Eagles. Ball situated at the seven-yard line. Burt Brown on the sideline, sending the play in. Got an injured player now for Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech 
Offensive lineman down there. Boy, this is just it's been a good football game to watch from up here. Defensive battle. You don't see that a lot nowadays in college football. Both defenses playing really well today. Daly Colt, the Memphis transfer, third year with the Golden Eagles. My main man, Joe Earl Jack, on the call right there, taking care of the injured player. Tennessee Tech athletic trainer. He's done so much. I mean, really the – Oh, my gosh. I mean, for, for COVID-19 protocols and everything, like the amount of testing, you think about a football team – college football team like 100 players all the coaches all the staff all the personnel so much is involved yeah i mean these these athletic head athletic trainers across the country i mean not only a football team but the whole sports you know athletes you know they have to take care of those guys and you know make sure their parents know they're taken care of so here's fisher give it over to david guest guess navigating his way down to the five yard line good push Ooh. See where forward progress ends up being stopped on a first and goal give to Gist. You got about two yards. Second down. Austin P. still more defenders in the box than Tennessee Tech has offensive players to block. It'll be second and goal from the five. You look at the FCS playoffs this year, normally 24. It's down to 16. Ten qualifiers, automatic qualifiers, that is. Six at-large bids. Only a seven-game season. It is that much more of a sprint as it is normally. So this is a huge game. Right. Fisher trying to spin his way into the end zone. Does he get the push? And he'll be just short. Close. It's going to be third down and a long one, it looks like. I like that, tucking you. He had Day Day Gist out to the top side pitch relationship. Could have pitched it to him. Another look at it. Good fake on motion right there. Probably could have pitched it. But I like the play. I like the thought process. Trying to put his head down, get it in the zone. Additionally met by Terrell Lucas. For a whole host of Govs there. Third down and goal. Ball at the two. It'll be Gist. Takes it himself. He's into the end zone. Nice play call. Good execution. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. And the Golden Eagles have the lead. Only lead before they had is the first field goal, 3-0, and now they've got the lead back. Just a great drive. Uh, they found something after halftime, and I think that something was number seven, Metrius Fleming, and uh, really opened up the defense a little bit to create some running room for Day-Day Gist. Nice play call. Bailey Fisher on the motion out wide. Nobody went with him, actually. Um, but Day-Day Gist saw the hole, hit it hard. The local kid, David Gist out of Cookville. Gives the Golden Eagles the lead, and the extra point makes it a 17-14 advantage. See, that's going to make him feel a lot better about the pass he dropped in the end zone down there that he, that he could have caught. 14 unanswered for the purple and gold. It's a three-point ball game early on in the fourth quarter. All lies in the Ohio Valley Conference centered on this game. Originally scheduled four games here on opening day. The other three already postponed to weather. And the Golden Eagles just cashing it in a touchdown. David Giss, first of the season. 17-14 Golden Eagle lead early in the fourth. Really good drive there by Tennessee Tech with the ball. The ball falling off the tee again. It's happened just about every time. But you said it, Dylan. A lot of eyes uh, on this football game today watching uh, – Conference champion from last year, Austin P, and up-and-coming Tennessee Tech. It's just been a really good game to call, uh, to watch from up here. Good defensive play on both sides of the football. And offense is starting to really get going as the game has gone on. Was a 7-3 Austin P lead at the half. 
Gov scored a touchdown early third quarter. Tennessee Tech has responded with the game's last 14. On the kick. Ooh, fumble. Ball's on the ground. Looks like the Golden Eagles have it. C.J. Evans it's coughs Tennessee it up. Tennessee Tech ball. It's Tennessee Tech football. Dylan, what a hit coming in from the outside. The gunner position just really made a dive. The last two returns by Austin P have been pretty good returns. And you'll see the gunner coming in from outside, and he'll make a hit right there. And then the cross flow from the opposite side created the fumble. Huge play for Tennessee Tech. Seth Carlisle recovers. Imagine that. What a game he's had. Had a fine game. Tennessee Tech forces its fourth turnover in this game. And how many times have we said this? The Golden Eagles will start on Austin Peay's side of the field. Yeah, and you know, Dylan, been pretty lopsided the first half. And then uh, Tennessee Tech has responded and got some offense going, and that's been the difference. Even with the situation of where they have shot, you know, really started off bad on first down and recovered a couple of times, which is tough um, for Austin P to handle that. Following the fumble, momentum with the Golden Eagles. Timeout. And a timeout call. What a good way to start this season of OVC play in the spring. I still can't believe it. I'm pinching myself February, and we're playing football. Beautiful 55-degree day, a nice crowd here in Cookville. And just, uh, you know, glad to be here with you, Dylan, calling this game at this time of the year. It seems, seems a little odd, February football. It's great that we're having this. Conference came out August 14th. The OVC was the last FCS conference to announce the postponement of fall sports into the spring. So it's not just football. You have volleyball, soccer, cross country. All the fall sports are either starting now or in the case of soccer, about to begin. So, I mean, it's a sports fan's dream with everything going on. It really is. Just glad they're getting that opportunity, though. They've been treated to a good one. I still can't believe it's 55 degrees after mm -hmm. it was like 12 the other day. Many inch ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great job getting the field ready, though, here at Tucker Stadium as the give goes kissed. Across the 20. Uh, you mentioned that. I, you know, I saw some pictures. Mark Wilson, the athletic director at Tennessee Tech, and his crew out here shoveling these bleachers a couple of days ago just so we could get to this. But uh, a lot of work's been done to make this happen, no doubt. And, you know, with the COVID situation throughout this whole uh, fall and leading up to this, just a lot of work by these athletes to get to this point. Gain of two, second and eight. Austin P getting a little bit of his own look here, Dylan. We've not seen that a lot. There's Fisher running a little option. Goes to David Gist. He's got it inside the five. Very nice play call right there. Two safeties over the top, although they're only about seven or eight yards deep. Look like a tight cover two defense. That was a really good play call. You can't run up inside against that many people in the box. They isolated on that defensive end, ran the option to him, and pitched the ball to Gist, and he did something with it down inside the five-yard line. On the three right now going in for Tennessee Tech. Boy, this game has really turned around in momentum. McDonald brings him down. Tennessee Tech searching for its third straight touchdown. Once down, 14 to three. Here's the same play. Let's see what they do with it. Wildcat with Gist. Running far side. Gist Got it. diving. He's in. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. Just good blocking right there. I mean, you saw some movement with Bailey going outside that time. Cookville's very own D.D. Day, 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 Day Gist, you'll see right here. Got some movement. Browner leading the way out there at Tidening with a good lead block. And Day Day just stretched out, got the ball over the imaginary line for a touchdown. Isaiah Norman attempting to bring him down. Gist dives across the end zone. And the Golden Eagle running back has his second straight touchdown.
this game turning. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Once Metrius Fleming got involved, it seemed like the Tech offense really got it going. Well, you know, up to that point, all Austin P was doing is just, you know, pinning the ears back and coming and stopping the running game. And, you know, if you don't have good balance, it's going to be tough unless you're a dominating team on one side of the ball. And um, you got to watch the kick. And I still say you got, you got to really give it up to Tennessee Tech's defense today because they've, you know, wore off a lot of threats from Austin P and, and have played just a really good game creating three turnovers that gave the ball back to Tennessee Tech's offense. Austin P fumbles the kickoff. The Golden Eagles take it. Three plays, 21 yards. Another David Gist touchdown. 21 unanswered for the Golden Eagles. Gist, the Wildcat. Tennessee Tech is rolling. 24-14, Golden Eagles lead. We'll be back to Cookville in a moment. 21 straight for the Golden Eagles. Fans here inside Tucker Stadium as Tech cashes in a three-play, 21-yard drive after the fumble picked up by Seth Carlisle on the previous kickoff. C.J. Evans coughing it up. Tucker Stadium allowed up to 5,500, a third of the stadium at the capacity. Here for the season opener, there's Jay Parker. On the kickoff, Parker with a flag being thrown. Gets near the 40, but could be another block in the back. Probably should be at that position on the field. Now we run into the situation, Austin P kind of hurting themselves. Kobe Perry, an illegal blind side block is the call. That'll take them back 15 yards and put them inside the 15 yard line as Austin P starts their drive with 10.08 left in the last quarter. Austin P, plenty of time, of course, 10 minutes to go. Our new head coach, Scotty Walden, team that went 11 and four last year, school record in terms of wins, made it all the way to the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs. Their head coach, Mark Hudspeth, stepping down. He won the Roy Kidd OVC Coach of the Year. Interim head coach, Marquise Lovings, during the fall. Now Scotty Walden, the give to Brian Sneed, first play of the drive. Sneed back in up the middle. Nice little spin move, but Tennessee Tech, Seth Carlisle again on the tackle. I'd like to see how many tackles that young man's had today. Good look at Seth right there from the back. Linebacker, middle linebacker position. Tennessee Tech staying in their two-deep zone. Second and eight. Inside, 10 minutes, fourth quarter. And there's Carlisle with Wilson hauling it in. Another catch by Wilson, but I think Tennessee Tech will give them that underneath all day long. Creating a third and five situation for Austin P. Tight end goes out, slot receiver comes in. Austin P looking to continue the drives, a big play. Down by 10. Third and five. Ellis over the middle, it's incomplete. That time. From the slot position, we got a flag on the play. Helmet off. Roughing the passer. Jalen Gladney. One of the few defensive penalties. Tennessee Tech is <laughs> big number 99. Jalen got in there. 5'11", 304 and a senior and waited too long to get to the quarterback. Uh, 
Might get a look at that replay. They're looking for targeting on this play from Gladney. If that is the case, he will be out of the game. Let's see. Replay right here. Looks like a false start first. Um, I didn't see the head bob raise. We'll see what they say up here in the box. Looked like a good form tackle with his head high. No crown uh, of the helmet being lowered. Gladney in the middle. You'll see spin moving right there. Yeah, oh. I think that roughing the passer makes sense. His yeah. body landing on him. You're not supposed to drive your whole body weight onto the quarterback. In terms of a targeting, not leading with the crown of the helmet like you discussed, nowhere up at the head. No. So I think the call is right. I don't know, though, about the targeting portion of heads, it. Head's high. I don't think you can. Of course, they'll have a better look at it over here and next to us and come up with the ruling, but uh, I just think it was a good play by Gladney. Maybe, like you said, taking him to the ground a little too forcefully. One of the keys to the game that we discussed at the onset, the Golden Eagles, they have a veteran offensive line. They have a couple of players, Henry Caramu, Chris Tucker, top five in the conference in sacks, Jalen Gladney, Gladney, another senior, Austin P. More of a younger offensive line. Give the Govs a lot of credit. They've held up. No sacks so far in this game. Yeah, Austin p has got a good offensive line. I don't, I don't care if they are young. One thing that they've got up in Clarksville right now that they've not had in the past is tradition. And, uh, you know, they're just bringing new kids in every year that can play the position, and you see that again this year. This is a good football team. But, uh, you know, Tennessee Tech's very hungry. Um, you know, they, they want their recognition too. They think they've got some good players, recruits here that they brought into this program. Dwayne Alexander's been around a long time. He's doing a fantastic job. So you've got two good OVC football teams right here playing each other and creating a good atmosphere and a good game today. Tech going 6-6 six and six in 2019 after a couple of tough 1-10 seasons. They raced out to that 4-1 and one beginning. Had a loss at Southeast Missouri in Cape Girardeau, a team that they ended up going 7-1. and one. They lost to Austin Peace, so the Govs had the tiebreaker there. But Tech lost that game in double overtime. They would have been 5-1, and one, and if you looked at the way the polls were going, they would have been nationally ranked Tennessee Tech. Yeah, really good start, and the season didn't end up the way the, the last game of the last season of TSU. Felt like uh, Tennessee Tech had a better team, didn't turn out that way. Uh, had they won that game, would have been the biggest turnaround in the nation. As it turns out, it's, uh, I think, number three turnaround in the nation for Dwayne Alexander and the Golden Eagles last year and then many of his uh, his offensive coordinator being hired at another school. He lost several coaches, brought several back in. Some good quality, solid football coaches in the program uh, with a lot of experience under their belt. Um, I, I think that's going to really help out the team as far as their maturity. Way to see the targeting call. Jalen Gladney. And here we go. Drew Myers. So no targeting, but of course still is roughing the passer. I think that's absolutely the right call. Yeah. I do want to say, uh, you know, congratulations, former offensive coordinator and Tennessee Tech quarterback Trey Lamb moving on to be a head coach, and they will play next Saturday. That will be their first game. I know, uh, if Trey, you're out there listening. Wish you good luck and your whole staff. Taylor Hennigan over there with you, and good luck next week. Former Golden Eagle quarterback, absolute legend at the quarterback position. Austin P. It's Brian Sneed. Nice run on first down by Sneed. I, I really, really like him. He's got uh, he's shifty, but he's got a lot of speed too, and he's a he's a big back. He's going to be a, a good one for Austin P. 6'1", 203 pounds. Ellis throwing far side. That'll be incomplete. Hit the turf intended for Wilson. Yeah, Wilson made it look good. It, it kind of looked like he made a catch up here, but it did bounce off the turf. Nice call by that referee on the sideline, Tennessee Tech. Another big play right here. Another big down. Third down and about six for Austin P. Needing the first down to keep this drive alive. It's down. down by ten, eight and a half to go.
Ellis has time. It'll be incomplete. Wanted Jay Parker. Instead, the Tech defense forces a fourth down. The freshman, Ellis, getting that slant route. They've been using it all game. Tennessee Tech's really on good coverage right there. Nothing doing. I'm really impressed with the growth of Tennessee Tech's defensive backfield. Played a really good game today. In with the linebackers, just doing a fantastic job. There's your replay. Got a hand on it. And fourth down for Austin Peay. That's Heath Price. Sophomore out of Watertown, Tennessee. Gov offense staying out there on a fourth down and five. At their own 38, Tech showing pressure. Golden Eagles back off of it. Ellis stepping up. He oh, won't get converged. it. Good job by Tennessee Tech's defense. Forced him out of pocket. Looked like he had an opening up the middle. That was going to be some good running room. And they collapsed in on him, led by number 48 for Tennessee Tech defense on the tackle. And that is Seth Price, or Heath Price. I'm sorry, nice tackle right there. Turnover on downs. Big play for Tennessee Tech with 825 left in the game. Want to give a shout-out to my son, Will Brooks, and the Tennessee Tech golf team on their way back from the Savannah Invitational. Probably, I don't think, did as good as they want to. Uh, this first tournament for Pope Brown's Golden Eagle golf team. But uh, it's your first, and uh, you guys will get better. So have a safe trip back, and uh, we'll get that thing going. Yeah, golf going on right now, too. Just added to the list of sports currently being played. I, I don't see how you do it, Dylan. You, I mean, I, I know they're probably paying you double here at Tennessee Tech yeah, right. <laughs> for the double amount of work you're doing. <laughs> hey, we got volleyball later tonight. A little ESPN <laughs> Plus, Tennessee Tech, Eastern Kentucky. Tune us in. Why not? Look at Trickery, Demetrius Golden go. Eagles with Fleming. It's amazing what, to watch number seven, Demetrius Fleming. Looks like there's going to be nothing, and somehow he wiggles out of it and gets positive yards. He is so good. Fast, the sophomore. His first ever play in college football was a 66-yard rushing touchdown, that dramatic game against Sanford. I tell you, it's, it's tough to come in as a freshman and, and, you know, go from the speed of high school to the speed of college. And it didn't seem like it took Metris very long. And you look at the quarterback, Ellis, for Austin P. he's picked it up very quick also. A few games in the fall that he got to play. But, uh, you know, I've been there and done that as a freshman, and it, it's, it's tough. It's tough to adjust to the speed of the game. Fleming collects eight. Second and two. Tech will run it with Day Day Gis. First down slips over the 20. Golden Eagles move the chains again. Tell you, Dylan, Dede Gist has really come to life after that drop in the end zone. He's a very sure-handed receiver, and he dropped one in the end zone. I know that hurt him, and, but he's really come back. And uh, One thing I've seen from last year to this year with Dede Gist is the increase in speed. He's really moving well out there. Scored the game's last two touchdowns. Golden Eagles once down 14-3 late in the third. They've rattled off 21 consecutive and searching for more. Really want to use all the clock that you can use right here. Bailey Fisher taking a look at the defense. Doug Malone making the call. And again, it's Gist for the Austin P defense. A loss on the play. Nice job. Austin P's inner front defense right there just collapsing on the play. Day Day Gist. Flags thrown. It's going to be a. Looks like a personal foul. It'll be a biggie if that's the case. Let's see. Yes, it's against Austin P. Uncharacteristic by J uh, Jackson, one of Austin Peay's best players. Um, personal foul after the whistle. Tennessee Tech 15-yard penalty. Ball's on the 12-yard line. Would have been a second and long instead. First down for Tennessee Tech. Of course, the clock an enemy now of Austin Peay. Golden Eagles can choose some more of it. 
Gist in the backfield. Goes his direction again. Another flag on the play. There is no, there is no doubt about that. Number 54, Tennessee Tech, the center. That is Daly. Has Daly Cole there. Cole. Good to see him back in the ball game, but a hold and pushes Tech back. I guess it helped if I put my glasses on where I can see the name. Yeah, Daly Cole, thank you. Dylan for that. He just reached out and grabbed him. He lost his block and didn't get have position on him. You'll see it right here. He just said, hey, <laughs> I can tackle too. But, you know, I'd rather do that than get your quarterback killed. So, Well, if anything, for a Tennessee Tech perspective, it keeps it at first down. Theoretically could mean more time off the clock. Yeah, that's right. Which now dips under six minutes to go. A 10-point Golden Eagle advantage. And the only OVC game being played today. The other three postponed. Guest. Short pick up there. Nice job running that clock. I think you're going to see they ran that play several times in the top side end. Bailey Fisher's watching. They're not uh, – they're covering the run, leaving Bailey. I expect him to pull that ball um, here soon. He should be out there wide open on his own. Austin P doing everything they can to shut down the run to get the ball back. Second down and long for Tennessee Tech. It's Kenneth Martin on the previous stop, the Florida Tech transfer. Second and 17. Cover two defense, safety's on the hash. For Austin P, man up top side on Metrius Fleming. Gov showing pressure. Here they come. Gist eludes the first tackler, and Day Day Gist near the 10 yard line. Very nice pickup on second down. Yeah, tough run up the middle right there for Day Day Gist from Cookville, Tennessee. Cookville High School having a big game today for Tennessee Tech. David Gisson season openers. Go back to that 2019 season opener, that incredible comeback against Samford. Tech down 16 with two minutes to go. Touchdown, two-point conversion. Got the onside kick. Touchdown, two-point conversion. It was Gist that caught the two-point conversion in double overtime. Golden Eagles won that game 59-58. I think that was our first game, if I'm not mistaken. It was. was Keep feeding just it hold, to Guest. And that's it. Just hold on to the football. Tennessee Tech's got the opportunity for a field goal. It's fourth down now. They'll have to go for that. No flags on the field. Timeout, Austin P to preserve 351 left. Possibly a 13-point gain if Tennessee Tech converts the field goal. Well, it'll be immediate timeout, so we'll step away as well. 24-14, Tennessee Tech leading. Golden Eagles with a field goal opportunity when we return. Field goal attempt by the freshman Hayden Olson. One for two in his first collegiate contest. He missed a 24-yarder. Came back to nail a 25-yarder. Try to give the Golden Eagles a 13-point advantage. Olson's kick is good. Good job by the freshman there. A lot of pressure on that kid, giving Tennessee Tech a 13-point lead. What a turnaround we've had in this second half. Make it 24 straight Golden Eagle points. Austin P defense, though, able to get the stop there, so it does stay a two-possession contest. And, and we just discussed that crazy Sanford game to open the 2019 campaign. So. You know this Golden Eagle team is well aware of what can still happen in this one. Yeah, 346 in the college game nowadays, that's a lot of time. You can run up and down the field with these spread offenses very quickly, and we know that Austin P is very capable of moving the football. Scotty Walden. He was the offensive coordinator at Southern Mississippi. Tennessee Tech was supposed to play Southern Mississippi in the fall. Would have been his first game as Interim head coach, he took over after one week. Instead, Tennessee Tech electing not to play that game. Tough loss to Louisiana Tech. He ended up coaching four games at Southern Miss. 
Then went over to Clarksville, took the Austin P head coaching job. Austin P having some pretty good success with young coaches <laughs> yeah. as they've proven in really turning that program around up in Clarksville. Did a lot of work to the stadium, a lot of uh, money flowing into the program and created uh, a lot of good tradition um, continuing that program uh, emphasis on football and getting kids to that area that want to play and can commit to this program. Olsen, the short kickoff. It's Jay Parker. See if the Govs can get a good return here. He's across the 30, makes a move. That is exactly what the doctor ordered for Austin P. Good field position, yeah, down by 13. He's dangerous when he's got that. He's had some really good returns today for Austin P. Getting him up to the 40-yard line with great field position, 338 left in this game. And Scotty Walden gets hired as a 30-year-old. The last time Austin P. did that was Will Healy. What he did in that 2017 season, Austin P. going 7-1 and in the OVC. Coach Healy is now the head man at Charlotte, an FBS program. Yeah. You got to give them credit. They found the, the person with the right fit, and look what it's done for the program. Empty backfield, and a new quarterback is in there for Austin P. That's Bryce Robinson Ooh. in his first play. He gets sacked. Number 91 for Tennessee Tech coming in from the top side, and that is... Yes, here moving. Real lucky he didn't. It looked like he was going to lose that ball for a minute. The quarterback for Austin P. As he got chased from the backside. Henry Caramu the sack. And a loss of five. We got a flag. Bryce Robinson, also a freshman for Austin P. Looks like more of a throwing type quarterback. This is definitely the situation that Austin P finds himself in with three minutes, a little over three minutes left to go. Penalty making it second and 20. Did play in the fall against Cincinnati, one of the best FBS programs in 2020. He'll hand off to Sneed. It's a lot of those yards back after the penalty. Tennessee Tech staying in their two deep defensive backfield. Seth Carlisle in the middle at middle linebacker. Just trying to keep everything in front of them with the trips. Down to this side of the field, single receiver up top. Third and Free 13. Play here. Robinson, so he'll take the shot deep, goes incomplete. Nice. Looking for Wilson. Nice job by Tennessee Tech's defensive backfield, not letting anybody behind them. Nyquan Washington on the coverage on that play for Tennessee Tech. Well, on the offsides, it's a good job, Robinson, knowing that, taking the shot. Yeah, and Austin P's been able to do that to Tech a couple of times and gotten a couple of free plays. That's dangerous. So Robinson, he's from Clarksville, of course, where Austin P is located. Tremendous run at Clarksville Academy. So the local kid, he redshirted in the fall of 2019. As we mentioned, he played against Cincinnati in the fall of 2020. One of the three Austin P games during the fall. Takes the snap on third and seven, and that catch is made. It's Jay Parker. Very nice grab by Parker, 5'5", 147-pound sophomore, redshirt sophomore. Had to go back across his body to catch that ball. In the Golden Eagle territory. Robinson, he'll step up. Ends up picking up a couple. Avoids the sack. That's going to be a little difference between Ellis and Robinson right there. Ellis would have broke that right there and got some good yardage up the middle on the quarterback. Push out of the pocket. Second and nine, gain of one. Two backs in the backfield, three wide receivers for Austin P. Minute 40 left. Robinson. Ball is loose. That's a fumble. Cubs get it right back, though. Ooh. 
Big play here for both teams. Third down and 11. Needing to get to the Golden Eagle, 37. Robinson setting up the screen. It's Snead. Snead near the 40. He will be short of the first down. The big fourth down play upcoming. Yeah, great job by Josh Relifer for Tennessee Tech defense recognizing that screen. There's a lot of motion and misdirection in that play, and he was able to recognize it and break through the block to make the play short of the first down. Fourth and a long four for Austin P, and they will go for it, of course. One minute to go in the game, down 13 points. Cubs take a timeout right here. Golden Eagle defense. Also forcing on the special teams a couple of turnovers as well. Four total turnovers in this game. Austin P now with one timeout remaining. You look at the Austin P quarterback situation after Javon Craig. Absolutely fantastic. The first teamer last year in the league. He had seven total touchdowns against Tennessee Tech. Well, Jeremiah Oatesfall played during the fall. He was a former OVC freshman of the year, but he transferred to Memphis. So you got a couple of freshmen now at the QB position. Here's Robinson on fourth down. He goes for Wilson. It's Forward gonna, progress. Looks like a first down. Yeah, yeah. Good throw, good catch right there. Back to Wilson. Little out route. Wilson picks up, sure hands. First down, got to the sticks. Very important for a receiver to be able to know where those sticks are, and he did. We're under 50 seconds to go. Tech by 13. Robinson. Pressure. Robinson will run. He's got a man out in front, Sneed with the block and a big play running the football right there by Bryce Robinson. Penalty on the play. I don't, didn't really see anything there, but Tennessee Tech got a player down on the Austin Peace sideline. Looks like number five. He's jumped up. He's good to go. It's Josh Relliford. But the block by Sneed. Yeah, nice. It's an illegal Golden Eagle block below the waist. So away from the play, someone must have hit low. I think Tennessee Tech will take this. You know, 35 seconds to go in the game. That is a big pickup. It's going to put them inside, well, at the 11-yard line going in with 35 seconds left. Two-score game. One timeout remaining, so the Govs will need the touchdown and a successful onside kick. Robinson, pressure, steps up and goes down. Huge play for Tennessee Tech. Number 94 in their first Tennessee Tech, that's A.J. Hall on the sack. Timeout, 29 seconds left. Coaching staff high on A.J. Hall. He's a freshman out of Rockledge, Florida. I tell you, I just really, really impressed with Tennessee Tech's defensive play today. Yeah, if you look at 2019 offensively, Tennessee Tech, so they were able to score a lot of points. They were second to this Austin P team in total offense in the OVC, scoring offense. But at times the defense, especially that stretch, Austin P and UT Martin both scoring over 50 points back-to-back -back games. But Sam Williamson right there, now the assistant head coach. Big Sam. You know, to me, the in doing these – games at Tennessee Tech, former player at Tennessee Tech, the, the difference is the defensive backfield. I mean, we time and time again last year, well, a couple of years ago, uh, they would get beat deep. Uh, receivers running by, and we're not seeing that happen right now. A loss of three, second down and 13. Robinson dumping it to mm. Snead over his fingertips. Incomplete. 
24 seconds left, just over. He had some room down there, and Snead's a powerful runner. Had some room down there, but it's just overthrown off, as you said, off his fingertips. Here's some of the Golden Eagle defensive plays. The turnover, Jack Warwick picks the pass off. Chris Tucker. Some of the Golden Eagle defensive plays. Chris Tennessee Tucker in on that last sack also. I didn't mention him. Empty backfield, Robinson on a third and 13. For the end zone, too high for Snead, incomplete. Back to Snead, good coverage right there on Snead. That's Willie Miller out there. Golden Eagle quarterback. <laughs> Been some injuries for Tennessee Tech, COVID-19 protocols. So we were told before the game that Miller might spend some time in the secondary, and there he is. And he's got that high school experience on the defensive side, so he can play the position. Guy's just a flat-out athlete. No doubt. Well, here we go. This is your ball game. Austin p has got to have this one. Fourth and 13. Robinson stepping up. Robinson throwing for Wilson, Caught and it. he makes the catch. Oh, what a grab, D'Angelo Wilson. Touchdown, Govs. Great grab by Wilson. That's why he's preseason OVC Offensive Player of the Year selection. Good job by the quarterback squeezing that ball into him for the touchdown. Bryce Robinson getting in, really threading the needle to get it in there. Good look at it right here on the replay. Quarterback plenty of time. Gets it in there to him. Nice, nice catch. Great game for that young man. So Benico Harley, the senior's got a touchdown. Now the senior Wilson's got one. Does help when you have a couple of freshman quarterbacks to have two senior wide receivers like Harley and Wilson. Yeah, there's no doubt. So Austin P still with a pulse here. It's a one possession game again. Old Deeds, extra point is through. And now it'll come down to an onside kick. Best thing Tech did there is making them use a lot of time to march down the field and, and get that score with 12 seconds left, and it will come down to an onside kick. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. They've waited so long. Of course, Tennessee Tech did not play during the fall. Austin P playing three games. Got a new Govs head coach in Scotty Walden. A look at the Golden Eagle coaching staff with Dwayne Alexander there. He said how much, and this would make sense really for all football players, just to finally get out there. Oh, you have man. all of this testing and, and all of these other things, and then even the weather the last week has kind of altered practice. But just to get out there and play football again. Almost a sanctuary for these players. I, th I think these kids are used to it now. And not only the weather, but you go in, in this area and even down toward Nashville, you go back to the tornadoes. It really started this weird, crazy year off and then go into COVID-19 situation that we've been dealing with, the whole country's been dealing with for so long. And these athletes have been dealing with that the whole time. It's changed everything, you know, that they knew was normal from, you know, online classes to, uh, just really day-to-day -day activities being different, having to separate, not being able to practice the same way. It's just been rough all around. I'm glad they get the opportunity to get out here and show, you know, what they can do. Here comes your onside kick. Ashton Dodd, the redshirt freshman. Here we go. He's got an opportunity. Austin P gets it. Oh, wow, the Govs recover the onside kick. One second off the clock. Cordell Jackson. You may ask, why did he go down? You cannot advance that, that ball. Great kick right there. Had a chance to receive it. Cordell Jackson, a great player for Austin P. right there on the spot to recover the ball. They're going to have it on the 47-yard line going into Tech territory with 11 seconds to go. Got to have at least one big play. A field goal will not help. They have to get it in the end zone. That was a perfect onside kick. Very nice. By Ashton Dodd. A little he different. He carried it further lead. and made it bounce. It was Jamal Thompson there around the action for Tennessee Tech. Not a whole lot he could have done. Took keep a tricky your, hop. Keep your eye on number 11. No timeouts for Austin P. 11 seconds left and a flag. Tennessee Tech all their fans on their feet. Austin P's fans on their feet. 
eagle formation. 12 man on the field. Only a five yard penalty, move them back five. So they'll start from the 48. Oh, what an ending. You get the onside kick, the Austin P touchdown. Tennessee Tech playing deep. You might see Austin P trying to move the ball down the field just a little bit. Bryce Robinson, there goes Wilson, laterals it. Another lateral to Harley, and the Govs will have a pretty decent look at this All right, after good. a couple of laterals. Nice job by Austin P getting some yards down there. Now you're going to have a chance to go to the end zone. you got three seconds. You cannot run the football. You have to throw it. You have to get it to the end zone. It all comes down to this. Down by 13, Austin P scores a touchdown. They get the onside kick. Keep an eye on number 11. He's on the lower side of your screen. From the 33, Robinson lets loose. To the end zone, it's out of bounds, and the ball game is over. Tennessee Tech gets a 27-21 victory. The Golden Eagles start off the spring 1-0. I think the wind was a factor on that play right there. He, he really got it up. The wind's blowing pretty hard, and I think it just sailed out. Great job, Austin P, making a good comeback right there and forcing the issue. Dwayne Alexander getting his kids off the field. Congratulations to Tennessee Tech. Big win for the program. Big win for Dwayne Alexander. Awesome game to watch and to call today on ESPN+. Plus. First OVC game of the spring. <laughs> spring season football in February. Beautiful day weather-wise. Sam, we were really treated to a fun one today. Tennessee Tech down 14-3. to The Golden Eagles score 24 unanswered points. Austin P, the touchdown late, the onside kick. It comes down to the final play of the contest. I mean, what more could you ask for for a football fan? Uh, just a great. I'm just happy to have football in the spring. And um, both teams played their hearts out. Really good defensive efforts by both teams. And, uh, you know, Tennessee Tech really reversing it after halftime and coming out, uh, getting the ball in Metrius Fleming's hands, moving it down the field and getting some scores on the board. Fleming, 52 yards receiving. He had a touchdown. You look at David Gist, another impact player today, 56 rushing yards and two touchdowns. And I still go back to that third and 19 with Tennessee Tech trailing 14 to three. Fisher rolling around on third and 19, creates time, finds space, finds Fleming for that big first down. And it seemed after that play, Golden Eagle offense really took off. It's the play of the game, there's no doubt. So Tennessee Tech gets the win. Golden Eagles will go to sleep tonight in first place in the OVC. No other games happen today with three other postponements. Tennessee Tech collects the victory. Sam, had a good time today. Enjoyed it, man. Good call on the game. Thanks for joining us on ESPN+. Plus. What a great game. We got Brian Kazax, the director today for this game. A great job by him as always. We thank all of the student workers making this broadcast possible. And a thank you to Jordan Ratty as well, Tennessee Tech Video Production Coordinator. So for Sam Brooks, I am Dylan Bazzano saying so long from Cookville, Tennessee. With the final scores, Tennessee Tech 27, Austin P 21. All games airing on the ESPN Network are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>